US drug maker Johnson & Johnson will collaborate with India's Biological E to develop and manufacture its investigational SARS-CoV-2 vaccine candidate. And joining us to talk more about this development is Dr. Paul Stoffels, Chief Scientific Officer, j, &J. Dr. Stoffels, thank you so much for joining us with this development. Please take us through what is this agreement with Biological E entails? Well, you know, Divya, uh, that over the last uh, six, seven months, we started to develop a COVID-19 vaccine. And we are now in the clinic. We have progress to the point that we are doing the phase one studies and hopefully soon in September starting phase three. And at the same time, in parallel, we are up the vaccine to the levels that we can deploy it all over the world. And BioE as a very important Indian manufacturer with the cap right capability. Is, uh, we have now put up a collaboration where we can start working together on producing a COVID-19 vaccine also in India. Mm -hmm. Right. Could you tell us how many doses uh, uh, will Biological E manufacture under this agreement? Um, we'll, we'll maximize the number of dosages. We are still in developing the technology, uh, but this will talk about hundreds of millions of dosages. This is a very large um, uh, production capacity which uh, BioE has available. The biological uh, manufacturing process is being transferred and being upgraded and hopefully we can produce more than 400, 500 million uh, vaccine dosages a year from India. Right. Uh, also, uh, could you tell us if this agreement is only for India or will it entail other uh, middle income and low income countries also? Well, we, uh, BioE is a very important manufacturing, not just for India, but also globally. So um, we'll, uh, we, we have made the agreement with, uh, with BioE as an international partner. And uh, we, we are going to uh, make sure that we maximize the capacity, production capacity so that also India, but also other countries could benefit from uh, the manufacturing capacity in India. Right. There is also uh, so much talk about uh, vaccines getting developed faster than uh, it usually takes for a vaccine to, uh, to get out in the market and we are jumping timelines. What has been your experience, uh, Dr. Stoffels, uh, in terms of developing this specific SARS-CoV-2 vaccine? Well, we started the uh, SARS-2 COVID vaccine um, not based on, on, on an overnight uh, research project. We are working on this technology for more than 10 years. Um, it's an adeno vector technology combined with the production platform. Uh, we have already done an Ebola vaccine, which is approved and being used now in Central Africa. We are working on late stage on an RSV vaccine, also a respiratory disease, as well as we are working on an HIV vaccine and a Zika vaccine. More than 80,000 people have been exposed to our vaccine vector, which is the carrier who, uh, who makes the vaccine work. Um, and we have seen a very good safety profile, a very good efficacy profile, and that gives us the confidence that the vector as such, the vaccine platform as such is safe. And this gives us a good feeling that we will be able to, to accelerate the development of the COVID vaccine, but still we are going to do all the necessary work to prove its efficacy and safety. We are planning a study of more than, than 50,000 people uh, to study it for efficacy and safety on a global basis. And uh, we will not cut any corners. Uh, we will make sure that we have tested extensively and that when it comes to the public, that it's safe and effectiveness is proven. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, uh, I understand you have already started off your phase one, phase two trials in the United States and, uh, and Europe and uh, Belgium to be specific. Uh, when, uh, when do we see the data coming out on this, uh, these two trials? Well, the, we will provide the data to the regulators uh, mid-September. Um, we started uh, end of July. It's a one-month evaluation and it goes further to six and 12 months, but the early data will indicate whether the, the, the vaccine is good for clinical trials for efficacy studies. And so we expect efficacy studies to start the second half of, the, of September. So somewhere in September, these phase one data will be available. We have good hope because we have done this for several different indications already and uh, we know what to expect. Right. Uh, coming back to your tie-up with the Biological E, whenever the trials will start off here, will it, will it directly start off with uh, phase three or how will that work? 
Well, the clinical trial will first start in Europe and the US um, and also in different countries uh, uh, around the world. We'll follow where there's a lot of um, um, the diseases because we have to prove that it works in a placebo controlled way. Um, so that will start uh, first in the US uh, mid-September and then most probably later this year in many other countries around the world, including India. Uh, the, um, the manufacturing, however, is uh, the transfer of technology, the validation is starting now, has already started. The world is eagerly waiting for a vaccine that, you know, that seems like our only way out from the current predicament. Could you, uh, could you tell us, realistically, when can we have a, a G&J vaccine? Let's assume that it, it passes all the uh, clinical trial muster. When do you think the G&J vaccine will hit the market? Well, from, from September on, it will take six months to have data or four to six months. If things go well, it might be uh, early next year. Um, in the first quarter, we hope to have the data, then work with the regulators. So realistically, I think we would have to wait for the second quarter and even to mid of next year to be able to vaccinate a large, large number of people around the world. I think it's similar for most of the vaccines. They need, they are all in the phase two, phase three space. Data will be generated in the next five, six months. Um, and then uh, product being available after evaluation in uh, um, mid next year, there will be a lot of vaccine available. Before that, there will be smaller quantities available. And also it depends on, uh, on where in the world it will be approved by the, by the regulatory authorities. Right. Also, uh, talking about the collaboration right now, uh, is this an exclusive agreement or, uh, or will you be open to tying up with other Indian manufacturers for the vaccine development? Well, it came down to having the right technology and the capacity and BioE happened to have that technology plus capacity. They have a huge capacity. So, um, and the tech transfer is not something simple. We have to, uh, we have to, um, uh, send people, people from BioE have to come to us, we have to learn it to work together because it's a complex uh, um, manufacturing process which need to be transferred and that's why we can only do a few in the world. Um, we, we can't do five or six of these transfers at the same time because it's too complicated and that's why we have chosen BioE with a very large manufacturing capacity so that we can do it at once to BioE and they can do it for us in uh, then starting uh, the production up, up in India. We'll see over the next few months whether more is needed in part, other parts of the world. We have capacity now in the US, in Europe, in India, and we are building on all of that to have a global supply chain for, uh, for vaccines for the world. You need a good protection with very high levels of neutralizing antibodies, but also durability Yeah, with, uh, with uh, T cell immunity, where if you're exposed later in the year or next year, that you're still protected. Uh, so uh, a good vaccine is one which you can uh, probably, we are, we are evaluating a, a single dose injection so that you can be protected immediately. And then most probably there needs to be a booster um, and we'll evaluate when, whether that's after six, 12 or typically 12 months, uh, like with the flu, it's not the flu, but it's like with the flu uh, that you have a shot every year, that type of, 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 of program. It has to be well tolerated because if you, if you vaccinate uh, hundreds of millions, if not billions of people in the world, it, it has to be well tolerated. Otherwise people will not take the vaccine. And so well tolerated, very high protection. And important question is still, is it protecting against the disease or is it also protecting against transmission? Can we get to what's called the, 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 the full immunity of protecting against trans transmission and, and, and infection? If we could achieve that, that's optimal. If we can do it with one dose, it's optimal. And if we can do it without too much side effects, it's optimal. So a single vaccine, no side effects or limited side effects and protecting against disease and protecting against transmission. That is the ideal profile and we'll try to get as close as possible to that. Right. Well, uh, that, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Paul Stoffels, for joining us. It's indeed an encouraging development that you have shared with us and all the very best for your, uh, for your vaccine development. Thank you so much. Thank you, Divya. Thank, thank you. A pleasure.